Happy Hagadays. Merry Pigmas. Happy Hamaka. Piggy's Navidad. Season's greetings? That's what they went with? Well, excuse me, but in my completely unbiased opinion, my ideas are better. Anyway, I figured I'd join in the yearly festivities by exploring the early episodes of Angry Bird Seasons, without any of those pesky bird powers, of course. Who needs them anyway? I need them. I need them. This video turned out to take just as long as the other two, which is so much worse than I initially thought. Oh, it'll be easy, they said. Make a quick seasonal Christmas special, they said. In this particular scenario, they is the past version of myself. What an idiot screw up. Worthless Before I can get to the festive stuff, I should cover Trick or Treat because it just feels icky to do the episodes out of order. Halloween wasn't too long ago, although I guess that kind of depends on when you're watching this. If you're still feeling the holiday spirit, make sure to like and subscribe. But if you want to spook me instead, dislike and leave a mean comment because for a YouTuber, there's nothing scarier. At first, I was getting treat after treat with not a trick in sight. The entire first section is trivial and the only level worth discussing at all is 1-14. This wooden demon is significantly more spooky than sturdy, so the only hard pig to get is in the furthest corner. Clearly, the use of Hal's boomerang power is intended, but we don't do that here. Instead, with all the other pigs gone, he can break in from above and crash straight down for the final fatality. 2-6 is a large level, but provides pretty powerful birds with decent opportunities for type advantage exploitation. The main thing I struggled with in my attempts was just getting all the pigs, which sounds stupidly obvious when I say it out loud. Point is, none of these third-rate thugs seemed impossible to hit or anything, I was always just a little short on firepower. Each bird needs maximum damage to win, and that's exactly what my second chuck had in mind when he broke through and took out the middle pig. The left middle pig. Matilda did an excellent job of knocking over these three stone squares to break most of the obstacles. See, I'm nice to her sometimes, when she deserves it. But Hal couldn't quite manage to finish the furthest foes, leaving my last chuck a situation rather similar to a split in bowling. Yeah, bowling metaphors, I know what you're here for. Without ever touching a pig, he dropped a stone brick onto the corporal and made the tiniest destabilization to collapse the wall onto the far pig. At first glance, 2-11 doesn't seem too hard, especially with my 5-bird setup. However, there's not much blue can do short of knocking over the small stone wall in front, and if the rest of the structure crumbles incorrectly, the rest of the pigs will be efficiently buried alive. Normally, that thought is scary enough to be worthy of Halloween, but for the enemies, that's a fantastic deal. Plus, the furthest wall is hard to knock over. I'd had the strategy worked out well beforehand, but the amazing sequence that followed the impact of my second launch is what really set me up for the win. It left only three pigs that each of my birds could target individually. Oh, nope, that didn't hit. Bad shot. I would have been so mad if my last chuck wasn't enough. 2-12 is constructed with stacks of sturdy stones. Obviously, the top two tiny troglodytes are pretty vulnerable and don't pose a problem, but knocking over the top of the tower doesn't do much to endanger the pigs on the bottom. Without any powers, it takes two or three birds to destroy a single rock block, meaning that the only real way to beat the level is to find the perfect collapse method. It just so happens that one of these many stone pieces is magical, the slab on the left. While destroying it doesn't guarantee a win, it's as close to a guarantee as I was gonna get. It is blocked by this tower of bricks, but a lucky shot with my first Matilda can make them fall. Then I focused fire on the slab, and my fourth shot was enough to break it. As the tower fell, it pushed over the right half of the base, and a brick to the head is almost always enough to kill a pig. Then again, these pigs basically are just giant heads. I'm not sure how to feel about that. So yeah, 3-7 doesn't look very good, and I'll admit I did something here that upon further reflection I am confused and ashamed by. Somehow, after barely 10 minutes of attempts, I concluded that this was impossible. I had just cruised through the first 6 levels in 20 minutes, and that was my breaking point. But I need to be strong for you, and a slightly more level-headed future me decided to take another look and beat it in… 4 minutes? What is wrong with me? Aim for the wooden cross and cross your fingers for a partial collapse that allows Chuck 2 to break the bottom plank for massive pig devastation. Hopefully Bird 3 is enough to pick off the stragglers. But I think 3-9 might be where my luck runs out, although the similarities to 3-7 and my approach are absolutely hilarious. As you might be able to tell, optimizing this stage is extremely challenging. Five birds, big level, so much debris to break through, and the closest and highest pigs are insulated from the rest of the structure, requiring an exclusive shot. The hardest enemy to reach also happens to be the best defended, because he borrowed a pumpkin from Plants vs. Zombies and that thing is not easy to crack. I broke through to him multiple times, but that alone was never enough. 
After a while spent attempting this with a single power use, I gave up and used two, which wasn't that hard. But come on, the second level ever in this challenge that requires an ability actually needs two? I won't stand for it, though figuring out what, where, and when to use said power is not easy given all my options. I'd been using my first chuck to get the closest pig, but I mixed up my strategy and started breaking in from above. Then my one ability goes to the leading Matilda, whose explosive egg can cause a debris destroying chain reaction and launch her up to get the uppermost enemy. Bird 3 gets the closest pig, but it was actually a mistake with my penultimate bird that allowed me to take the win. She accidentally hit the lamp and bounced off the stone block, plunging precisely onto the pumpkin pig. After that, even I'm not bad enough to mess up the final shot. 3-10 gives me 5 chucks and is made entirely of wood, so of course it stands to reason that it would take me almost an hour. This tower guarding everything severely limits my options, because the only way to get over it is with a very specific arc that doesn't leave much room for experimentation or improvisation. Destroying the top area still leaves the two pigs underneath, very well defended, and knocking it down takes a minimum of two birds while sometimes leaving debris strewn everywhere. At least collapsing the far tower is easier, because it's supported by the planks in the middle. But why ever launch to the far side of the level if I don't need to? usually focusing over there would leave the closer enemies alive, so my successful attempt used two birds to take out the tower and the rest drilled down on the left side. The entire right side is supported by this single wooden plank, so destroying that means I'm home free, except for the time it didn't. This was a very painful moment. I still die a little inside every time I replay it. Breaking into 3-12's wooden cobweb turned out to be a bit trickier than I'd thought at first. Even five birds, with mostly chucks, struggled to reach the far end of the structure, and stone debris would often impair my options lower down. It certainly doesn't help that the birds lose a sizable fraction of their damaging power over that distance. Taking the bottom route is definitely the way to go, because when I got a few lucky collapse sequences back to back, I could finally reach the furthest enemies. Well, those pigs have shown up in my bird's nightmares exactly once at this point, but hey, it's Christmas time now. Hopefully not quite so scary? Ah, wait, never mind, I just googled it. Christmas might have even more terrifying monsters than Halloween does. The sheer number and variety of evil Santas who torture naughty children is a highlight. I guess I just need to hope that Season's Greetings 25 stages don't reflect that too strongly, and that I am not on the naughty list. Level 1 introduces this episode's central mechanic, Snow. On an entirely related note, this game sucks, and I hate it. See, up until now, the strategy for every difficult level has been pretty clear. Find an efficient way to collapse the structure in order to take out the pigs inside. By experimenting to find the weakest points, this usually ended up being surprisingly possible. Snow is easy to break and doesn't slow my birds down much, but has a unique property that stabs this challenge through the heart, rotates the knife 360 degrees, pulls it out, then stabs the heart a bunch more times. That metaphor got a little lost. Anyway, anti-gravity. Unlike every other construction material encountered so far, snow towers cannot be collapsed. This lets them support other collapsible towers, making every level they appear in significantly harder. And because this is winter themed, that means snow appears in almost every level. Level 2 actually has a decent amount of challenge, but doesn't have snow, although I promise the reason for that little rant will become clear soon. But for now, we can laugh at the absurd physics system. Yeah, this sort of thing does happen in the first game, but never to this extent. The physics seem different this time around. Everything feels just a little bouncier. Without Matilda's explosive egg, I needed to collapse the towers for clear shots. The middle tower can drop some debris to deaden the most distant degenerate, and a clean arc takes Chuck right to the bottom. Red needs a bit of luck for the final collapse, but it's not too bad overall. The sixth greed of the season starts to show us just how slippery snow can be, and obviously that's true in a literal sense, but it also helps victory to slightly slide out of my grasp whenever I get close, because there are reams of this white stuff clogging up the path. Red collapses the top of the tower for a split maneuver, and Blue follows to dispatch the Corporal Straggler. I mean, he tries to, gosh darn he did his best. Chuck can do it though, because he's not worthless. My second blue also was wasted. Matilda, I want you to remember that whatever bad blood there might be between us, there's a reason you're in B tier and blue is not. Now get out there and make me proud. A thick layer of snow encases the majority of level 8, and here's where that really starts to become an issue. The first shot is tricky, but thankfully obvious once I discovered it. Destroying this support near the top sometimes is enough to drop these stone blocks and kill all the enemies outside the snow shield. 
sometimes. This is as close as it gets to completely random. From there, it's easy enough to break through the snow and trigger the TNT for four more kills, but this tiny pig inside the snow barrier is the limiting factor. It takes all three chucks to break through the top and kill him, which has the obvious downside of, you know, failing the level. In my hour of attempts, there was exactly one time I managed to get him without going from the top, when the TNT perfectly propelled a pig to punch past the powdered precipitation. Unfortunately, this attempt saw two others survive, and while the top guy being alive was just bad luck, I don't know what I'd do about the bottom one, so even this wasn't enough to confirm the stage was possible. Guess it's time to swallow my pride and disgrace season's greetings with a power usage. The first shot goes how I said, but the next one breaks through all the snow to destroy the hardest pig and create an opening at the top. As you can see, I launched my last bird a little early, but he still would have been necessary. Probably. Level 10 has a similar problem, but by similar, I mean even worse. It's straight up impossible to reach the furthest enemy without using an ability. The snow castle is just too thick to get anywhere close, and I can't launch far enough to try from above. To complicate things further, the two closest pigs can't be touched by dropping the boulders in other parts of the level, so they require a shot of their own. And to add insult to injury, one of my three birds is red, so I'm not even avoiding a power use with that one. I used him to take out the bottom enemies, the first Chuck to weaken the top, and Chuck 2 smashed through the entire structure with his extra speed. Rather depressing to watch, but still oddly satisfying, somehow. Season's Greetings level 13 wasn't that bad, but it took me 10 minutes to get this shot where everything slowly fell down, bit by bit. With Chuck Luck that good, I didn't even need my third bird, but he is still very special and beautiful. When there's wood in a level. 16 gives me 5 whole attack avians, and they're of actually decent quality. Getting through all this snow and material still poses a challenge, though. As usual, figuring out the best route for collapse is the winning strategy, so Matilda launches us off by getting rid of a lot of the snow in front. With the path mostly clear, Terrence can destroy the first two towers and leave the further ones completely exposed. Snow crumbles underneath Matilda, and Chuck slices through wood like... a saw? I appreciate you showing up to work today. Um, you weren't needed, but thanks for the extra points, I guess. Now, the three power uses in this video have not been especially fun, but you're about to forget all that, because this final stretch of levels is the most torturous encountered so far in this series. In level 17, I'm missing eight birds without access to Blue's powers, and he may be good with ice, but against snow, he's pretty worthless. Well, maybe that's not entirely fair, but there's just so much of it here. At least some shots are simple and obvious. Red can take out the group of four in the closest tower, and any of the birds can destroy the Santa cosplayer below them. That leaves three blues for the furthest three pigs. Brief reminder that if this entire structure wasn't built out of gravity-defying snow, collapsing it from below would be a viable option. But it is, and it's not. The worst part is this string of bells, and this won't be the last I see of them. That's because they appear regularly in my nightmares. The problem is that unlike every other object in the game, bells are completely unbreakable. So if I hit them while destroying the rope, that's a bird wasted. If they fall in the wrong place, the level becomes impossible. As you can probably guess, the furthest pig is the hardest to deal with, between protection by snow, bells, and distance. To avoid the bells, I tried going through the first tower, but that strategy never panned out. After more than an hour with no confirmation of possibility, it was time to suck it up and use Blue's power. Splitting allows for a much cleaner bell drop, leaving two Blues for the last enemy. And yeah, they're definitely both needed. In the hour and a half I spent on level 19, the closest I managed to get was this attempt where falling stone bricks destroyed the snow and knocked over the middle house. Problem was, those same stone bricks blocked me from having a direct shot on the furthest enemy. The snow here stabilizes everything, not to mention provides a thick security blanket. So while this might be possible with a better collapse, I was never able to confirm that. It's once again time for the bitter taste of failure. Here, the optimal power use is pretty easy to figure out though. Matilda's explosive egg can straight up delete a huge chunk of the snow protecting the last two houses, defeating the middle pigs, and exposing the last one. Chuck is the only bird who can get the closest, so that's his job, and my second Matilda had an easy shot to finish things off. Level 20 continues this perfect storm of bad luck with trees built completely out of snow. Every pig here is easy enough to kill. Only the one next to the present takes more than a single bird, and the two closest can be dispatched with a single shot to dislodge these stones. But I simply can't cover enough angles with the avians I have, and the snow props up whatever I can't reach. It was only when I discovered a shot that could knock down this stone block onto the pig behind the tree trunk that I was able to confirm the level was possible. But this might be the single least consistent shot I've ever encountered. The stone needs to at least destroy most of the snow, even if it never reaches the pig. That way, Chuck 2 can knock over the tree trunk, and Blue can arc over to get the final pig. This took me over two hours! 
Stage 21 is weird, but hey, Terrence is here. Terrence, please save me from having to use another power. I know you'll do your best. I believe in you. At first, I thought Blue's or Chuck's power was required, because as powerful as Terrence is, all the pigs were just too spread out for him. Plus, the snow clogs things up. But after finishing it with Chuck's ability, I realized I'd only spent 40 minutes on this level. Heh, <laughs> remember when that was a lot of time? Well, now it's nothing. If I'm saying a level requires powers, I'd better have spent at least an hour on it, right? Actually, no, please don't answer that. I began to experiment more with Terrence and achieved some promising results. Once, he bounced up to knock down the large pig at the far end of the level, although his hat saved him, somehow. Another time, Terrence took out the entire middle section, but both Chuck and Blue failed miserably to capitalize on that opportunity. It was only when the TNT blasted my big boy back toward the start of the level that I finally had my real chance. Only one hog remained. Come on, Chuck, you got this, and you hit the glass. Okay, darn. Well, Jake, your time is now. If there was ever a time for you to rise to the occasion, this is it. Wow, great job. I honestly didn't think you could do it. Uh, level 23 doesn't even have snow, but it's still a perfect recipe for challenge failure. Let's start with an extremely low bird count. About three for this massive stage should do the trick. Sprinkle in a string of bells to block all the best shots toward the second structure, and make sure to place pigs deep inside the building so they can't be reached with normal shots. Congratulations, you've created the final boss of Angry Birds Seasons, or maybe just Angry Birds in general. So, what's the result of all these problems? A level that is possible with only one power use. Hypothetically, anyway. In my many hours of attempts, I did luck upon a few extremely useful shots, but I was never able to consistently replicate them. You're meant to blast through the bottom of the tower with Chuck's ability, but I was able to push it over without. This attempt you're watching is the closest I ever got to beating the stage with a single bird power. But Matilda wasn't fat enough to finish off the final foe. I guess I need to feed her more. It's also possible to get all of the far pigs with a single powered up chuck. So as you can see, it's technically possible to beat the entire level with two birds and a single power use. If only I was able to do it. See, both of these shots are really hard. The power shot requires perfect activation timing and a perfect arc, but it can be achieved semi-consistently, like maybe once in every 40 or 50 shots. But getting the closest pig without using a power is something I was never able to replicate. Not even with my handy dandy mouse positioning tool, which actually hasn't been useful at all in this series so far. Maybe next time, buddy. Because of all this, I went ahead and used both Chuck's powers. On the bright side, or more accurately, the not quite so dark and depressing side, I've still never had to use all the bird powers in a level. Yay? Call me insane, and you'd probably be right, but I just couldn't leave it at that. So I kept trying. My best bet was to take out all of the far pigs with my power use and pray for a collapse of the front tower that allowed Matilda to defeat the straggler. I got really close a few times, but always managed to screw it up right at the end. Eventually, this became my most played level in all of Angry Birds, totaling five hours of attempts. Five hours. The worst part is that time could have been spent doing something way more healthy and productive, like binge drinking or repeatedly punching myself in the face. Somehow, four and a half hours in, I had an epiphany, a new strategy to mix things up and replenish my rapidly waning hope and patience. Instead of hitting the far area from above, which makes it incredibly difficult to kill all the pigs, why not fly under the bells? That way I could destroy the supports and easily collapse the structure. All it required was a lucky shot with my first bird to clear the path. This is certainly inconsistent, but it's bound to happen at least a few times every hundred attempts, and every time it did, I got another chance. Eventually, the stars aligned for my first two shots, but Matilda didn't have a clear arc from above. Instead, I smashed into the stone triangle, and the resulting collapse was enough to finally, finally put this level behind me. I wasn't recording my audio at the time, so I'll fill you in on what happened. I yelled yes really loudly. Take my word for it. As if to taunt me after all the pain I've just experienced, the last level is composed entirely of snowballs, the only type of snow which is actually affected by gravity. Huh, Rovio, you think that's funny? I sure don't. Well, for a Christmas-themed challenge, this hasn't been a very joyful video. I'll blame the six power uses for that. But if my suffering made you happy, that's the best gift I could have asked for. And I've still managed to avoid using more than one power on any level, so I guess that's the new standard going forward? 
given the amount of abilities I managed to avoid with another few hours of attempts, it's possible that these can be improved further, so let me know any strategy ideas you have. I think Season's Greetings levels 8, 17, and 19 had the best chance, but eventually I had to stop if I wanted any chance of getting this video out by Christmas. Thanks for watching to the end, take it easy, and have a hugely happy Haga Day!